Hi guys. So previously we have discussed about uh, 5G throughput optimization basics and we discussed more about uh, the data scheduling, the traffic scheduling and today we will talk about control scheduling, the control channel scheduling. From the throughput perspective, the control channel scheduling is more important because uh, if we have an impact on control channel, our throughput impact will be much higher. So today let's understand what's the difference between data and control. We are talking about PDSCH and PDCCH and uh, what's the difference in, in their scheduling algorithms. So from the, for the start it is pretty similar. A user that is in good conditions will get a higher MCS, let's say 256 gram for data traffic and it will get a more aggressive PDCCH aggregation layer. So over here I have just put an abbreviation PAL1 which means PDCCH aggregation layer 1 or aggregation level 1. So over here let's say this UE sends CQI12 so the G node B gives it the best modulation 256 gram plus the most aggressive, aggressive PDCCH aggregation level which is 1. So this 1 means that only 1 CCE will be allocated on the PDCCH. Now if this UE over here is in slightly medium conditions so it sends CQI9 so the G node B on the data part will allocate let's say 64 gram and on the control part it might allocate PDCCH aggregation level 2. Level 2 is, is something that will need 2 CCEs while this one will need 1 CCE so this one will have lesser overhead but it this one will be more robust. So similarly if we look at the last one a user in cell edge very bad radio conditions it sends CQI5 for instance so the G node B might choose a low modulation QPSK for the data and a very ro robust PDCCH aggregation level let's say 8 or 16. So this means a bad user will use a, a very high PDCCH aggregation level and a low modulation scheme. So this is pretty much similar for both data and control but um, here comes the difference. Again if there is one UE which is uh, let's say in the area where you have 64 QAM and aggregation level 2 but it sends CQI 12 then the G node B will simply allocate the highest MCS 256 QAM and the highest and the most aggressive PDCCH aggregation level which is 1 which this UE might not be able to decode. So that is why we need another algorithm to actually find the most optimum PDCCH aggregation level and this is where the difference starts between data and control. So let's have a look at it from uh, the same diagram that I explained previously in the data scheduling part. Now what happens? A G node B sends some CSI RS, some CSI interference IM and the UE based on them uh, sends back a CSI report which carries a CQI rank indicator and PMI. Now based on the CQI the G node B will allocate an MCS let's say an MCS can be 64 QAM and a PDCCH aggregation level let's say it gives aggregation level 4. So for this example let's say the MCS is 16 QAM and PDCCH aggregation level is 4. Now if we have a HARC acknowledgement that means the UE was able to decode it so the PDCCH aggregation level did not change it remained at 4. Now if we have a HARC NAC let's say the UE was not able to decode it in that case the PDSCH MCS might be reduced let's say if you had 16 QAM it might go down to QPSK but you can see that the PDCCH aggregation did not change it's still 4. Now if the UE does not send any response no HARC ACK no HARC NAC then the PDCCH aggregation level reduces or should I say increases to 8 to make it more robust. Now why does it happen? Why the PDCCH aggregation level does not change on a HARC NAC? This is the difference between PDSCH and PDCCH and let's understand it with an example. Let's say I have two users, this green user and the yellow user. Now the G node B sends their data over here. So how will they find where their data is allocated? By reading the PDCCH. So this UE will read the PDCCH the PDCCH will tell this UE that its data is allocated over here and this UE will read its PDCCH and this PDCCH will tell this UE that this data that the UE of the data of this UE is located over here. So now uh, once they find this out then they go and read the data. 
Now if let's say this UE is able to read the data successfully and this UE is uh, not able to decode this data so what will happen this UE will send an hark acknowledgement to the GNODB while this UE will send a hark NAC to the GNODB telling the GNODB that it could not read the data or it could not decode the data. Now the point here to understand is that for both these UEs whether they had a hark ack or a hark nack to actually able to read the data first they need to ensure that they read the pdcch and only once they have decoded the pdcch successfully can they actually go and try to read the data and then send a hark nack or a hark ack in other words whether the ue sends a hark nack or a hark ack in both these scenarios the, there is proof that the UE is able to decode the PDCCH. Only once the UE was able to decode the PDCCH, it actually can find out whether it can decode the data or not. So a hark knack is also a proof that the UE was able to decode the PDCCH first. Only then it can actually go and find the data and if it fails to, to decode the data, it sends a hark knack. So in our case, if there is a hark ack or a hark nack, that means the PDCCH was still successfully decoded and there is no need for the GNODB to change the control channel aggregation level. So it means there is no need to modify the control scheduling. However, if the GNODB has sent some data and the UE did not respond with anything, no hark ack and no hark nack, then it means that the, the, the UE was not even able to decode the PDCCH. That is why it did not send any response. So then now we understand over here that when there was a hark ack or a hark nack, there was no change in the PDCCH scheduling. Only the change happened when there was no response. So the GNODB sent an, a scheduling with PDCCH aggregation level 4. There was no response then the GNODB thought okay because there is no response that means that on this scheduling the UE was not even able to decode the PDCCH and so in this scenario the, the GNODB should actually modify the PDCCH scheduling and we can see that it will modify it to a higher and more robust aggregation level. Now uh, another aspect over here that we need to understand um, why the PDCCH uh, scheduling is more important than PDSCH. Now I explained uh, something similar in one of my Volte optimization videos um, but th to understand that understand it with the concept of DRX. Right now we every vendor has a DRX right. For what does DRX mean? That the UE will go to sleep mode. It will wake up after some time look if there is any data for it. If there is no data go back to sleep mode. Now if this UE wakes up uh, and it tries to find its data and let's say the data comes here with PDCCH aggregation level 4 and it decodes it and but it could not decode the PDSCH it will send a hark knack. Now this UE knows that there will be a retransmission for this data so it will keep itself awake it will not go back to sleep mode. So the GNODB will send a new retransmission and after let's say 4 to 8 milliseconds whatever the uh, criteria is and the UE will decode that and it will get the downlink packet. But in this scenario if the UE wakes up and it finds out that there is an allocation but it cannot decode the PDCCH then the UE will not even know that there was any downlink allocation that there is any downlink data for this UE. So in this scenario the UE will not even know there is data so UE will just go back to sleep mode and the GNODB then will have to wait for the next time the UE wakes up to send the retransmission of this data. So the scenario might happen that in the case where the DRX um, on duration timer or the, or the UE wakes up for the, from the DRX for a very small amount of time, the PDCCH uh, scheduling failure can actually uh, cause a lot more delay in comparison to PDSCH. Uh, scheduling failure. So if there is more delay in downlink data packets what will happen is that on the application layer your RTT will increase 
and your throughput will decrease. So the impact of PDCCH can actually be much higher in comparison to PDSCH failures and that is why the control channel scheduling is very important when it comes to your robustness and when it comes to your stability of throughput. So I hope this, uh, this is clear now. You understand the difference between PDCCH and PDSCH and what is it, their uh, scheduling differences. So if you like it, please subscribe, do share with your colleagues. Stay tuned for more. Bye-bye.